chaplaincy service has changed during the pandemic is that we've lost our volunteers because they haven't been able to come into the hospital. Um, and that's a, a big change for us because it means that the staff team are, are dealing with, with all of the, um, the, the visits and the support. Um, and because the uh, relatives couldn't come in during the peak of the pandemic, we were very much the, the only ones who could be on the ward providing that emotional um, and spiritual support for the patients, um, in addition to obviously the staff who had their uh, medical care to, to prioritise. Um, so one of the big differences, it was very much focused onto the staff team. Um, and the, the other thing is that um, we found that the staff stress was rising considerably, so a lot of our work has increased with working with staff. Chaplaincy during the pandemic, um, well, speaking personally, to be honest, has been quite challenging. Um, um, never, I mean, I started work at 16, and never in my life have I ever had concerns about going to work and with the risk of thinking I might catch the virus, um, a virus that um, potentially that can kill, can harm me serious or my family. So it was seeing the courage and the bravery and commitment of, of the, the other hospital staff that actually encouraged me to think, well, if they can do a 12-hour shift on, on a, a COVID red zone, uh, on ICU, then, then I can jolly well come in too. I can remember the first time when I was asked to come in after the onset of the pandemic. So before you went in, people would be um, donning up, they would be wearing their masks, they would be wearing their gloves, they would be wearing additional um, PPE as well. And it just felt like a lot of um, doctors and nurses while they were doing that. Um, it felt like they were going into somewhere where they felt there was a lot of danger and they were actually putting their life on their line just to look after the patient. And that actually gave me a lot more kind of respect. I already have a lot of respect for the doctors and the nurses that worked over here. But especially seeing that, that they were putting their life on the line, literally, to save lives and to help others, that gave me an additional respect. One of the things that I do outside of the hospital is I'm a rapid response chaplain. So I go to... I've worked with the local ambulance service going out on the trucks with the ambulance crews and I've attended some major international crises like Manchester bombing, Grenfell Tower. When you go to something like that, you go as someone that is okay, you're balanced, you're not involved in the event, you're there to care and to help for the people that have been hurt by that particular event. Covid is very strange because we're all involved in it. We all have great fear, we all have quite anxiety. If I go to work as a chaplain in the hospital and I go to see a COVID patient, am I going to be a threat to my family when I go home? Most of the members of staff over here, they understand that for a complete well-being, it's not only the physical aspect of a human being that needs to be looked after, but it's also the spiritual being and also the inner being has to be at peace as well. And for a lot of people who are religious, whatever religion they may be, um, they will only get that from a leader or somebody of their particular faith who can comfort them at that time in a very kind of religious, pastoral manner. And that's what I have found that the members of staff really appreciate this, they understand this, and that's why they always go out of their way to make sure that a visit takes place from the chaplains and team whenever they feel it, it will be beneficial and whenever it has been asked for. Now, during COVID, of course, it's been very difficult because church leaders and church ministers and, and faith group leaders have not been allowed in. So we've had instances where we've um, talked to a patient, um, we've fed that back to their faith group leader because that's what they wanted us to do and pass messages the other way. But equally, we've, done, we've used an iPad on the ward with the, with the staff, and we've been part of that process of linking the patient with their family or with their loved ones or with the faith group leader. Actually, just today before I came over here, there was a, a, a lady who sadly um, passed away. And um, her mother said that she was half Christian and she was half Muslim. So at the end of her life, there was actually 
a um, priest and also myself present there. And that was very comforting for the mother to actually see that. And we made it very clear that we are not in competition with one another. We all um, help one another to actually do their job and to actually see as many patients as possible. During COVID, the number of staff that have just stopped us and just wanted to chat with us. And of course, because we've known the staff over, over a period of time, we've built relationships with them. And often we don't talk about you know, their faith or our faith or anything like that. But we might, we might talk about the fact that their loved one's unwell or their loved one's not able to work. Or, and they just want to unload. They just want someone to talk to where it's not written down and where they can just be themselves. And so we share a little bit about ourselves, share a little bit about them, and we chat. And uh, it's, very, it's a real amazing privilege just to sit with staff and hear them share what they want to say. And uh, we find that it might be two or three minutes in the corridor. It might be an hour or more in there where their location is, or in here. And so it's, it's, it's a brilliant privilege. We always have a struggle with chaplaincy um, when it comes to the way staff um, feel and patients feel about the role that we, we do. There is an assumption that it's very much about faith sometimes, very much about religion. And if you ask people, you know, are you religious? An awful lot of people who have a very, very strong faith would say no, because they don't use that word to describe what it is that they follow and, and what gives them meaning in their life. So I think that the, 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 the hurdle we have is the misunderstanding. Um, but I think during COVID, it has actually helped that perception because we've been around and they've, they know that they can talk to us far more. And, and we've, we're doing our best to sort of make it known that we're open to being there for people, whatever their faith. When you're having a conversation with someone, if they bring faith into it, then obviously we will follow along that and see where they want to go with it. But it's always led by the person we're, we're speaking to. And I've had long conversations with people where faith has not been part of it. But when it comes to their spiritual care, things like their family, their pets, um, their hobbies, the things that really matter to them are what, what, they're, what they're using for support. And, and that's been challenged during this time. So I think we, have, we do have um, you know, a good profile, I think, within the trust. And the senior managers um, and the senior staff do seem to um, respect what we do.